Good evening. It's reaction cast time for Under the Dome Radio. We are here for the penultimate episode of this epic, epic television show. The earth shattering under the dome. It's just crazy what you can think about what they can put into trailers to make you actually want to watch this thing. But it is the penultimate episode. We're talking incandescence this evening on episode 71 of your Under the Dome radio podcast. Thanks again for joining us on Under the Dome Radio, the unofficial podcast by and for fans of CBS TV's Under the Dome. I'm at Wayne Henderson, your voice acting podcasting Green Bay Packers fan here with your weekly pep talk, or else maybe I'll just erase your file, Sir Troy. Do not erase my file, Sir Wayne, otherwise I will have to gut you and leave you bleeding to death on top of a catwalk dripping onto your favorite actress's face down below. (laughs) Thanks for the visual. What are we going to talk about tonight? What's going on on this 71st episode of Under the Dome Radio? I have to say the first thing out of the gate is that we realized that the umbilical cord, I think one of our listeners, I think it was Justine actually from our full re- full episode last week said that the umbilical cord is where you're going to get the most stem cells in order to synthesize this cure. And it was like, oh my gosh, they actually listened to our podcast because that's exactly what they did this week. They went to go find the stem cells from a dead person. How does that work? Either that or beyond all possible coincidence, they came to their senses. That could be. That could be. Now, do you think that the umbilical cord would have actually been viable had Big Jim actually delivered it to one Hector Martin? I have a feeling that something else very mysterious would have gone wrong. What do you think would have happened? Well, they just would have tried. Maybe they would have done the same thing they did last week. And they would pretend that it was working, and then they would find out the bad news at the end that it didn't work, and more innocent red shirts would die. Innocent uh, red shirts would die. Why do we got to keep picking on the red shirts? You know, they had their they had their run in the sixties. Well, why do why, why do we got to keep going back there and picking on them? That's what I want to know. Is is just the way it is. Speak, but you go you ahead. Feel Barbie's frustration and anger at the beginning of the episode because. Nothing screams anger like pressing your pedal to the metal in Julia's Prius. That is true. And I was surprised at how quiet that Prius sounded as it came down that gravel road. I really thought Junior for a minute was going to jump out and actually put his hands right on the car and stop it dead in its tracks. You could do it. You probably could, depending on how much energy was left in the car. Just don't go all aggro on me, Troy. So the question I have for you is, with the calcification of the dome, and it's trapping out the oxygen, Right. and they did say it was getting warmer in the dome as well, quote unquote, I have to wonder, is this going to be similar to the situation in the Under the Dome novel, where it, temperature started to rise a little bit in the dome, and we're finally getting back to the book for at least one episode? That's got to be what they're doing. It, it, I think it's a little too little, a little too late going back to a Pat Benatar reference since last week was Pat Benatar week. So we had Bon Jovi week and then we had Pat Benatar week. What's the song for incandescence? That's what I want to know. The song listeners, that's your assignment for tomorrow. We need to hear it by 7 PM Eastern time. What is the theme song for this episode? Give us a call at plus one nine Oh four, four, six, nine, seven, four, six, nine, or just go to under the dome radio.com slash feedback and let us know. But you know what I was impressed about from this episode was it was so good to see the old listening from behind and around the corner trick being shown on yet another television show. Well, and we had Lily doing it last week. And so then we had the good old doctor doing it this week. I mean, this is just classic television writing at its finest. (laughs) Um, No, it's recycled scripts at its finest. Speaking of recycled scripts, did you catch the Falling Skies finale this past Sunday? Yes, I did. That was pretty good. It was uh, another product of one Amblin Entertainment Television that also does Under the Dome. And I could have sworn it might have just been me. You tell me because you saw the Falling Skies finale. But when the Queen Mother left the cocoon, it escaped very much like an Ashvini baby would have. So my theory of Under the Dome being the prequel to Falling Skies, I think, still holds true. 
until it's proven otherwise, I think your theory is spot on. It was very Falling Skies-like. In fact, that whole cocoon thing on the wall that it burst out of could have been a recycled set piece modified just slightly. I'm not sure because it all happened so fast. It sure looked like, uh, what's her name's cocoon from season four on Falling Skies in Chinatown. Very, very similar. Budget cuts. Budget cuts. You know what else I quote unquote liked about this episode this week of Under the Dome? I'm all ears. It it seems like the dramatic music that they were using in this episode, the volume of the dramatic music was extra loud this week. And I think it's likely trying to cover up uh, the dialogue that was so witty. I thought it was just because all of the elderly people were having a hard time living. So they had to turn up the volume to make sure the elderly people knew what was going on so that they knew how to get to the lake in order to kill themselves. I don't even know what was going on in this episode. Everything was going in every direction at once. And to paraphrase Julia Shumway, and much like season three of Under the Dome, that nursing session was like nothing I've ever seen. <laughs> and, and the best part was that in the previews for the episode before it started, they had to remind us of the Julia and Barbie uh birthing scene where julia shoves her arm right onto that girl and just pushes that baby out that's just amazing stuff i could watch that all day well last week of course like you said and go ahead and watch it all day so i don't have to julia and barbie helped deliver the baby with such speed and precision this week julia and barbie were able they have so many skills they can do everything they were able to look at ava and her eyes and tell that she was suffocated. And this is the interesting fact. The, the detective work was just tremendous because they immediately jumped and said, oh my gosh, it must have been Christine. Not Sam, not Junior, not Big Jim, not Hector. It has to be Christine. Let's go find her and kill her. <laughs> it's much like when you find a red hair on the barn floor mixed in with the hay you can tell that that red hair is probably Christine's. When in doubt, suspect Christine is the motto of season three of Under the Dome. So here's a question that I have for you and the listeners. Again, plus one, nine, zero, four, four, six, nine, seven, four, six, nine, or under the dome radio.com slash feedback for okay. our full discussion episode tomorrow evening. Get those in by 7 p.m. Eastern time. The question I have is at the end of this episode, was that the real Christine, the anthropologist archaeologist we don't even care what she was anymore because she was alien to us the whole time so did we see the original christine this evening or was she still part alien up until the point she died excellent question i think she's you know because of how things have gone this season i bet she's totally normal again and she's been redeemed which means it's time for her to go but i want to know what the listeners think and while you're thinking of answers to that question. I have a question as well, a legitimate question. Okay. My legitimate question of the week, where did everyone get all of those blue t-shirts? I mean, seriously, Chester's Mills local Big Lots must have had a huge overstock sale that wasn't rummaged through when they were ransacking all of the stores in town. That was a huge selection of blue t-shirts in every size from infant to triple XL. They all matched, and it was uh, shocking. I want to know, where did they get those? I want to well, hear your answers. I will remind you that this is the prequel to Falling Skies. So if these are the Ishveni disguised, <laughs> <laughs> then on their way to Earth, they actually ran across the Axiom, which was the yacht that the humans lived on from Wally. -E. And if you remember in Wally, -E, they said, hey, tried blue. It's the new red. And then everybody changed their shirts from red to blue. So I think they stole them from the Axiom from by and large. I like the answer, but I'm interested in what the listeners can come up with that might be <laughs> more feasible or at least hilarious. Okay. But I, I think blue, you know, blue is the new black. And did you notice that just so we would not get confused, um, Junior and his uncle Sam were wearing green shirts, not blue shirts. Yes, and I also liked how we were able to know that they were actually related because they had the same hairstyle messed up because they couldn't find a comb before they took people out to the lake for their death. At least you dress up for a funeral, I thought. And two hours ago, under the dome time, 
didn't Nori say that she could not feel anything anymore, and now all of a sudden she's happy to see Joe and go camping? Yes, Just I guess that'll have to do, Wayne. I love you too. <laughs> Jeez. That, oh, I'll get a sleeping bag. And oh. can we can we also say that uh, Nori in this episode has now done the nickname Dirty Harry because did you really have to unload an entire clip <laughs> into that one guard? <laughs> Yeah, she's saying she's like bang 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 bang. I was, I was trying to count them to see if she actually fired off a full six or a full 18. Did he fire six shots or only five? Mm. I, I think what Question. she was trying to do was get a, either a high score on a video game or her finger got stuck in the trigger. That could be. That could be. The bigger question is who shot first? <laughs> Greedo. <laughs> Everybody knows that now. Okay. No matter what George Lucas tries to say. I was just testing, testing everybody's knowledge. Just oh, make... I spoke up too soon. Sorry, Troy. Plus one, nine, zero, four, four, six, nine, seven, four, six, nine. If you disagree with Wayne and agree with George Lucas. Oh my, well, that's going to make some phones ring. That's, that's the whole plan. And, that's the whole plan. <laughs> and Hector, he says that he actually used the phrase, everyone under this dome is innocent. Yeah. What? <laughs> after they've been watching all this surveillance footage of murders and arson and uh remember when everything was frozen <laughs> i just let it go i just let it go wayne <laughs> oh i like uh neil's comment he's uh, chiming in early with the kinship that dresses together stays together you know i i actually like the blue i might try to sport that for the labor day weekend here barbecuing out there I'm just going to jump in my pool before it closes and just not come back up because it's going to be too hot here in the, Chicago this weekend. The The only problem is there won't be any blue shirts available. They've all been sold. Obviously, there's an embargo. Oh, that's not fair. I just, I, what am I going to wear to the pool this weekend? I can't wear red. No, don't wear red. Um, Packers green would be a good choice. Because if I wear red, I'm dead anyway. So exactly. red, blue doesn't green. matter. Green. green green is a safe color green. okay so big questions for this episode are what's going to happen next christine <clears throat> has confirmed once again which was my when, wasn't my original theory because my original theory was a contact lens that fell on chester's mill but that's not to say that the aliens that are coming are not giants just saying they but, might be that would be awesome giant butterfly aliens with uh bad eyesight that's Much right like us that's right. We still need to see the giant moth by next week. If we don't see it next week, this whole season has been a failure. I can tell you, if I don't see that giant moth, I am not buying the Blu-ray. False advertising. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're going to sell a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but for for real, do we think we're going to see this alien race that is supposedly coming that the queen needs to prepare the planet for so that they can have their epic battle? Uh, there's only 42 minutes of Under the Dome left. And if if Neil's right with his theory about Mothra, then we're in. But a lot's going to have to happen. And based on what we saw in the teaser trailer, um, hmm, I don't I don't know how much they're going to be able to squeeze in. Okay, so if, if it's Mothra, then who's playing the part of Godzilla? Big Jim? Of course. That would be sweet. He could juice himself up with the stuff that he gave Junior that made him all Hulk-like, and then we could have Hulk Big Jim in the final episode. That would be, I think I would actually, that that would win, that definitely would win Emmy. Definitely. And definitely then, Emmy. then you will get to hear the line you've been waiting all season to hear. This is my contact lens. <laughs> right? <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. It, how about... How about some of the visual effects near near the cocoon and the and the shadows showing that the queen was moving about outside? That the visual effects people are not even trying anymore. They have officially given up and mailed it in. I'm so serious. Were you shocked to find out that uh, Kylie was actually playing the queen? Like, oh my gosh, you have your father's eyes and a really cool wig. Not of. <laughs> Of course, as a cost-saving measure, Ava and Baby's Barbie is full-grown and looks exactly like Ava with different makeup and hair. Yes. I think that is a giant cop-out. They should have at least gotten a different actress to play for those last two episodes. 
I, that, that is the one thing that I would say is the, the downer for this episode. That's going to bring my rating down a little bit from where I was. Cause I, I was hovering pretty in the middle for this one. Really? Are you serious? I was, I was enjoying it from like the, the half hour mark to the end when, when the baby came out, I was like, Ishfini escape that I, I, I'm in, this is great. My, my, my theories are coming true, but it's, I, a repeat. I, but it's a repeat. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I already saw it on Sunday. Uh, let's just say. Yeah, never mind. Wait till you, I'll have my rating tomorrow. Well, we gotta wait. You gotta hold the ratings because we gotta watch it a second time. No, no, <laughs> the, the, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> once, trust me, once is enough. All right. Well, and how about Julia? You know, this that fight scene. You know, maybe she killed Junior. We don't know, but since we didn't see the body and hashtag Amblin Entertainment. Much like Pope on Falling Skies, you just know we're going to see him again, and it's going to be egg-tastic. That's right. Junior will be back. And I really love the fact that Junior was just standing there taking those punches from Barbie left and right, because it just proves once and for all that even though Barbie is super, he is not as super as Junior. (laughs) Because Junior is the only one that can wear the same police uniform for an entire season and not have it smell. And now there's nobody in the police force. You know, they had a full force season one and, you know, then they kind of worked their way down. And now even the police vehicles aren't running, only the Prius. And dear Toyota, I am not going to be buying a Prius, especially after seeing all the nonsense this season. This is true. No this Prius is- for Wayno. Okay. With that, we are at our time. So again, plus one, nine, zero, four, four, six, nine. 7469 is the feedback voicemail line. We want to hear from you. 7 p.m. Eastern is the time to get that in tomorrow, Friday the 4th. Yes, it is Labor Day weekend, and we will do our labor of love to make sure the episode gets out on Saturday just for all of you under the Dome Faithful because we only got one left. Do your party dance now. I thought in honor of Labor Day you were going to give birth to an alien baby. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Uh no. Remember I said I wasn't goodness. I wasn't gonna touch any pregnant people just in case for the rest of the season. Because you never uh, know. Labor day. That's so bad. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Uh yes, under the dome radio.com slash feedback. Let us know how your labor day was here in the United States or whatever you're celebrating this weekend around the world. Uh we'll be back again with our full discussion episode. We got two episodes left. If you haven't been catching up with the full episodes, we actually have a secondary audio drama taking place on those episodes between our two listeners, um, Aaron Arnett Jr. And I'm going to forget the doctor's name. And now the doctor's going to oh, come after Doctor, awesome. awesome. That's right. I wanted to make sure it was awesome. I oh, it, oh, it's totally awesome. Yes. It's so, Dr. Awesome. It's kind of like the arch nemesis of Aaron Arnett Jr., and will there be more to their dramatic story and their battles lost out in a jungle in a mysterious place with eggs? Crashing into a dome outside of Toronto. Yeah. I mean, it's been a lot of fun listening to the two of them go back and forth. So you want to check out the, re- uh, the full episode. If you don't care about Under the Dome anymore, tune in just for that, because that is going to be some interesting stuff coming up this week. Again, full episode out Saturday morning on the 5th as you wake up for your holiday weekend here in the United States or whatever you're doing on Saturday in your part of the world. And with that, we will close things up here for Under the Dome Radio. Why do we sing it? Because we paid someone to do it for us. And it's awesome. We've gotten a lot of use out of that jingle. If you like it, let us know. We'll ship you a copy of it and you can have it for you know posterity's sake if you want. Absolutely. We are getting our money's worth. And like you said, we sing it because Aaron, our... Was it Aaron Arnett that sang it? Oh, no. We lost Wayne. Oh. Wayne um, and Wayne is back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was wondering. If the logged on downstairs. I, no, I was just worried that you were turning into a pixelated uh, alien and was uh, dematerializing right in front of our eyes. Is that a dome wall behind you? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so good. I'm sorry. We only sing it because Aaron Peterson says we sing it. That's because right. we paid money for that. And you're right. We got our mileage. We thank you for tuning into this silliness as we just try to cope with the fact that Under the Dome is ending. And we're just waiting for football season. So until the full episode, 
I'm at Wayne Henderson. And I am at Troy Heinrichs, making sure that we actually do not have labor on Labor Day as we stay trapped under the dome. Under the Dome Radio. Under the Dome Radio is a proud member of Noodle Mix Network. Get more of our award-winning and award-nominated podcasts to make you think, laugh, and succeed at noodle.mx. Get organized in your personal and professional life. Laugh with our clean comedy. Theorize over great television shows and so much more. All waiting for you at noodle.mx.